In the year 58 BC, the Roman general and consul, Gaius Julius Caesar, invaded the region of Gaul and began a series of campaigns that would vastly extend the borders of the Roman Republic and change the course of history. Caesar, an overly ambitious general that strived to achieve great successes, decided in the year 55 BC, whilst in the midst of his military campaigns in Gaul, that he would lead his Roman legions to a new frontier, a place never seen nor travelled to by any Romans prior, the island of Britannia. Caesar's reasoning behind invading Britannia was that he believed the Britons were assisting the tribes in Gaul against the Romans during his campaign. Although there is no evidence for this claim, it is more likely to believe that Caesar formulated this excuse, so he could invade the island and initiate a campaign against the Britons. Before his invasion, Caesar sent one of his generals with a small force to scout the island for suitable landing areas, and, after speaking with locals and asking them about the details of the island's geographical coastlines, Caesar was informed of this information. His two legions then constructed a fleet on the Gallic coastline in preparation for the journey. However, Caesar's ships could not support the additional size and weight of their horses on this journey, so he had them sent southward to occupy a nearby port. At midnight of August 23rd, Julius Caesar set sail for Britannia. After hours of sailing, the Roman fleet came within sight of the British shore for the first time. They were met with the sight of the Cliffs of Dover. Unfortunately for Caesar, at the top of the cliffs were native Briton tribesmen watching and waiting. These Britons were armed and ready, equipped with chariots and cavalry. It quickly became obvious to the Romans that this was going to be a contested landing. Caesar quickly assessed the situation at hand. He ordered his commanders to sail farther northward and relocate their fleet at a more suitable area for his legions to disembark. After sailing north for a few miles, the Romans found an ideal beachfront which had a level shore. Although as the Romans were sailing, they were being followed by the native Britons. The Britons had tracked their movements northward. It now seemed inevitable that they were going to try and prevent the Romans from safely disembarking. Another problem the Romans faced was that their ships were quite large and could not fully disembark close to the shore. This forced the legionaries to disembark in deep cold water. Suddenly one soldier, an eagle standard bearer of the 10th legion, leapt forward into the water along with the Roman eagle standard and yelled the following words, Leap, fellow soldiers, unless you wish to betray your eagle to the enemy. I, for my part, will perform my duty to the Republic and to my general. The legionaries were fully armed and carrying their heavy shields all the while faced with trying to fight off the enemy. This proved to be a decisive incentive for the legionaries to act. Although the Britons were easily able to spot isolated pockets of struggling Romans and swiftly rode toward groups of legionaries, throwing their projectiles and charging at the exposed flanks of the Romans. However, Caesar acted quickly. He sent smaller ships with Roman soldiers to reinforce his men on the shore. <laughs> The Romans advanced inward and began to push back the Britons. As the Romans had now gained a solid footing on the shoreline, they were able to counter the Britons' offensive push and send them retreating inland. Without any cavalry, the Romans could not give chase. Although, for the first time in their history, the Romans managed to gain a foothold within the island of Britannia. The first priority of Caesar's was to set up camp and fortifications. His men advanced further inland and began to build a fortified encampment that would serve as the Roman headquarters on the island. 
Upon the retreat, the native Britons decided that they should try and sue for peace, showing empathy for initiating hostilities. Caesar initially accepted their offer and requested hostages. The first night after their arrival, the Roman ships had been damaged by a storm. Aggressive ocean waves had smashed the ships into one another. With the ships being their only means of transportation, it left Caesar's army stranded on the island. Caesar sent infantry parties inland to search for food and supplies, while at the same time most of the remaining legionaries attempted to repair whatever ships that were still somewhat salvageable, as well as try to locate any ship parts and debris that could be used to build new ones. Upon their foraging, the groups of soldiers were ambushed by the Britons while they were not fully equipped and were completely unprepared. The Britons had completely surrounded and outnumbered them, hitting them with projectiles from all sides. Caesar, wasting no time, gathered as many men as he could within the camp and charged out towards his men's aid. They arrived just in time and the Britons retreated into the woods. He opted to not give pursuit due to his lack of mobility and their unfamiliarity with the surrounding landscape. The Romans retreated back to their camp. Caesar, realizing that the native Britons had no intention to make peace, then prepared himself for what was to come. We are informed by Caesar himself that after the ambush, the Britons had gathered a large army and marched toward the Roman camp. As a large force of native Britons approached the Roman camp, prepared to give battle, Caesar gathered all of his men, roughly 10,000 infantry or so, and marched outward to meet them head on. Coming within range, the Roman legionaries loosed their pylums into the Britain lines, breaking their cohesion. As they clashed in the middle, they were met with a wall of Roman shields forming an impenetrable wall. The Britons had never come up against a disciplined fighting formation like this until now.
The fighting was fierce with the Romans pushing back the Britons. Caesar has a small contingent of cavalry ride around and flank the engaged Britons. As the fighting intensified, it was crystal clear that the British tribal warriors could not withstand the disciplined advance of the Roman legions any longer. They soon broke formation and fled from the battlefield. Caesar, together with his legionaries, chased after the fleeing enemy, cutting down many Britons in the heat of the pursuit. After pursuing the Britons from the battlefield, the Romans then turned to any nearby settlements and burned everything in their path. Caesar had this done to discourage any tribesmen returning to attack their camp. After this, the Romans retreated to their camp. After their defeat, the Britons realized that any further attacks against the Romans would be futile and once again sued for peace, which Caesar granted. As winter approached, the campaigning season was coming to a close, and Caesar opted to return back to Gaul. After his men had repaired the ships, they boarded and departed back to Gallic lands. The departure of the Romans marked the end of the first invasion of Britain. It is unlikely that Caesar intended a full-scale invasion and occupation of Britannia, given his small force and lack of supplies. He became the first Roman general to ever set foot on the island, and he extended further the limits of the known world. And just a year later, he would return to the island with a much larger force.